السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم يا مقلب القلوب والأبصار ثبت قلوبنا على دينك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا يا الله Today, inshallah, we will start with uh, hadith number eight. عن ابن عمر رضي الله عنهما أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال أمرت أن أقاتل الناس حتى يشهدوا أن لا إله إلا الله وأن محمد رسول الله ويقيم الصلاة ويؤت الزكاة فإذا فعلوا ذلك عصموا مني دماءهم وأموالهم إلا بحق الإسلام وحسابهم على الله تعالى عبد الله بن عمر رضي الله عنه May Allah be pleased with that uh, He reported that the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم uh, once said I have been commanded And of course, the one who commands Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, is Allah. I have been commanded by Allah to fight people until they testify that there is no God except Allah. And that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. And perform salah and pay the zakah. If they do so, they will have protection of their blood and property from me. Except when justified by Islam. And then account is left to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So let's start and uh, see what this hadith is about. So the hadith starts with the command to fight. Umirtu an uqatil. I have been commanded to fight. But why do we fight? We fight to make Allah's word the highest word. And that, that means that Allah's laws are the highest laws. And these laws should be implemented. So, Sayyidina Ibn Mas'ud uh, narrated in uh, one of the hadith. He said, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لا يحل دم امرئ حتى يشهد أن لا إله إلا الله لا يحل دم امرئ يشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأني رسول الله إلا بإحدى ثلاث So Ibn Mas'ud رضي الله عنه narrated that the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said it is not permissible to spill the blood of a Muslim except in three cases the married person who commits adultery, a life for a life. So if someone kills a person, then he is to be killed. And the one who uh, uh, forsakes his religion and separates from the community. So, this is the, uh, these are the three conditions, the three instances that a person's blood can be spilled. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu said, لما توفي رسول الله وكان أبو بكر رضي الله عنه وكفر من كفر من العرب 
فقال عمر رضي الله عنه كيف يقاتل الناس وقد قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أمرت أن أقاتل الناس حتى يقول لا إله إلا الله فمن قالها فقد عصم مني ماله ونفسه إلا بحقه وحسابه على الله So Abu Huraira radiallahu an reported that when the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed away, Abu Bakr radiallahu an was appointed as his successor as the caliph after Sayyidina Muhammad. So amongst the Arabs, some men after the death of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam apostatized and Abu Bakr resolved to fight them. So Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu said, how, how can you fight them when the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam declared, I have been commanded to fight people until they testify, la ilaha illallah, there's no God but, but Allah. And if they do so, then their blood, their life, their property are secured, except when justified by law. And it is for Allah to call them to account. So, Sayyidina Umar was thinking, how can Abu Bakr do so? So he, when he talked to him about it, Sayyidina Abu Bakr said, Wallahi lauqatilanna man farraqa bayna al-salati wal-zakah. Fa'inna al-zakata haqqa al-mal. So, Sayyidina Abu Bakr said, By Allah, I would definitely fight those who make distinction between salat and zakah. Because zakah is an obligation upon the rich. The rich has to pay zakah, and I will kill that person who differentiates that. So, Wallahi, law mana'uni iqalan kanu yu'addunahu ila rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam laqataltuhum ala man'i. So, by Allah, he's swearing that I will fight them even to secure the piece of rope which they used to give to the messenger if they did not want to give it anymore. So this is what it means to, to fight people. To fight people until they, they witness that there is no God but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam you, whenever he, want, he wanted to attack some people or whenever he sent a dispatch to fight some people, so he would, he would never attack them until it was done. So if he heard the adhan, if he heard the call for the prayer, he would delay the fight. And if he did not hear the adhan, then he would know that those people are non-believers. So he would attack them immediately after dawn time. So becoming a Muslim, when someone witnesses that there is no God but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it means that... Uh, uh, people, these, these people who became Muslims, they protect their blood and money. So they are secure. No, no Muslim can kill them except if they did any of the three uh, just mentioned, mentioned uh, things. So what will happen then? Then the Hadith says, حسابهم على الله تعالى الله سبحانه وتعالى is going to have reckoning so what does this mean 
it means that when someone pronounces Islam, when he performs salah, when he gives zakah, then he is secure. But on the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to judge him. So in dunya, we do not judge. It's not our business to judge people. If, if that person is sincere, he had sincere intentions, and here we, we link again this hadith to the first hadith that we started with, the actions are by their intentions. So if the person is sincere, if he had sincere intentions for the actions that he's doing, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to, um, uh, to reward that person. So no one is allowed to judge people. This is judging people is the work of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if that person is sincere, he will be rewarded. If that person is a liar, then Allah will take care of him. Allah will punish him. So we have to take things the, the, uh, the, how, how they appear. So actions that we carry out must always be based on what is apparent and not on what we assume. And this is one of the biggest problems in our society. Whenever we have any issue, any problem, any dispute, so you will find that one of the reasons is, is misunderstanding. So he said so, then he means so. You cannot do that. Actions have to be based on what is apparent. This is how you take actions of people. So we treat people based on what they portray and what do they say. If, if deep inside they are not sincere, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will judge them. It shouldn't be our concern to judge people. Take things as they are. So we shouldn't fall into the traps of shaitan that would, uh, uh, he, he would be pleased to see a dispute. That would be his, his, his happiness just to see people getting, uh, getting divided. It's a problem to see people getting united. And when they get divided, the, the reason for that is, one of that reason is, why did they do so? They said this word, then they mean this. No, we cannot say that. Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, إِنِّي لَمْ أُؤْمَرْ أَنْ أُنَقِّبَ عَنْ قُلُوبِ النَّاسِ وَلَا أَشُقَّ بُطُونَهُمْ I have not been commanded to, to dig into the hearts of people, nor to split their bellies inside. I have to take what's out, what's, what's apparent. So this is Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we will link this hadith to the next hadith when, uh, when Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, do as I do. We have to follow. We have to follow uh, the, the footsteps of, of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, replemented Usama bin Zayd radiyallahu an when he killed a person uh, saying la ilaha illallah after saying la ilaha illallah so he was 
on uh, he was uh, with uh, a group of Muslims raiding on some people of non-believers. And when uh, Sayyidina Osama saw, saw that person, he, he, he lifted his uh, sword so to kill him. And the words, La ilaha illallah, came out of the, of the mouth of that person. But he did not care and he killed him. So when he went back to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he told him what happened. And Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was very upset. He would say, what, what, would you, uh, what would you say uh, in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about a person who said, la ilaha illallah? So, uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say, la ilaha illallah kalimatun ala Allah kareema. So the word la ilaha illallah is, is so important. It has so much value to, to, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we know that on the day of judgment, a card of uh, with la ilaha illallah will be uh, put on the uh, scale and the person will be a winner. After all his deeds were equal, good deeds and bad deeds were equal. But la ilaha illallah will overweigh everything. So Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, says, Man qalaha sadiqan adkhalahu Allahu biha al-jannah. Whoever says la ilaha illallah sincerely, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would get him into paradise. Waman qalaha kaziban. حَقَنَتْ مَا لَهُ وَدَمَهُ But whoever, what, who says this word just um, uh, without sincerity or he was a liar, he will be secured, he will be saved in this dunya, he will not be killed. وَلَقِيَ اللَّهَ غَدًا فَحَاسَبَهُ He will meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah will uh, hold him account for his words for not being sincere, for being a liar, for, 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 for everything. So the hadith ended with, and their reckoning will be Allah the exalted. So Allah is the one who is going to uh, scale the actions. He is going to judge the actions. So with this, the hadith tells us that we carry out rulings in this life based on what's apparent and not based on assumptions. We cannot assume that this person says so, so he means so. No, ask. Ask. Just get things clarified. In the day, in the day of judgment, Allah will deal with everyone in a just way. So we have to be careful in this dunya. So get get your heart just pure to have it a sound heart on the day of judgment. So this is our focus, is the heart should be sound. Leave everything to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's going to judge people. He's going to, to take care of everything. So moving to the next hadith, inshallah. عن أبي هريرة قال سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول ما نهيتكم عنه فاجتنبوه وما أمرتكم به فأتوا منه ما استطعتم So uh, on the authority of Abu Huraira رضي الله عنه he said, I heard the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, what I have forbidden for you, 
then avoid. And what I have ordered you to do, then do as much of it as you can. فَإِنَّمَا أَهْلَكَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ كَثْرَةُ مَسَائِلِهِمْ وَاخْتِلَافُهُمْ عَلَى أَنْبِيَائِهِمْ For verily, it was only the excessive questioning and the, the, the disagreeing with their prophets that destroyed the nations who were before you. Subhanallah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was ordered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to, to fight people until they do so and so. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, will have reckoning. So we have to follow. This hadith starts with, it starts with what I have forbidden for you, then avoid. مَا نَهَيْتُكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتَهُ فَاجْتَنِبُوهُ وَمَا أَمَرْتُكُمْ بِهِ فَأْتُوا مِنْهُ وَاسْتَطَعْتُمْ So do as much as you can of what Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has ordered us to do. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu says, خَطَبَنَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمُ فَقَالْ So once there was a ceremony by Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam And he, he said in the uh, ceremony, Ya ayyuhal nasu qad furidu alaykum al-hajju fahujju. So uh, he said to, he addressed the people and he said to them, Pilgrimage, uh, which uh, was made uh, 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 an obligation, then do it. So this was, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, it has been ordained for you. Pilgrimage, it has been ordained for you. So perform it. So, فَقَالَ رَجُلْ أَكُلَّ عَامٍ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ One of the people, one of the men said, asked, he asked uh, whether they should perform it annually, every year. فسكت حتى قالها ثلاثا And he repeated it three times. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if I were to say that it should, then it would be obligatory. لو قلت نعم لوجبت ولما استطعتم and you would not be able to perform it. Imagine that every year we have to go to Hajj. Imagine how much we have to save every year and just for a question that someone asked. Then Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went on and he said, ذَرُونِي مَا تَرَكْتُكُمْ Leave me alone. Leave what I did not specify, leave it alone. Do not ask questions. فَإِنَّمَا هَلَكَ مَنْ كَانَ قَبْلَكُمْ بِكَثْرَةِ سُؤَالِهِمْ so leave, leave things because the, pre, uh, the predecessors perished simply on, on account of their much questioning. And their disagreement with their prophets. So that's that what perished them. فَإِذَا أَمَرْتُكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ فَأْتُوا مِنْهُ مَا اسْتِطَعْتُمْ وَإِذَا نَهَيْتُكُمْ عَنْ شَيْءٍ فَدَعُوا So, when I command you to do something, then obey it. Obey it as much as you can. Do as much as you can. And when I forbid you to do anything, then leave it alone. So, when that person asked, 
uh, about performing Hajj every day, every year, sorry. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, la tas'alu an ashya'a in tubda lakum tasu'kum. Wa in tas'alu anha hina yunazzalu al-Qur'an, tubda lakum afallahu anha. So in Surah Al-Ma'idah, Ayah 101, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O oh, you who have believed, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu. لا تسأل. Do not ask about things which if they are shown to you will distress you. So do not ask when, when, when uh, Prophet Muhammad وسلم, says when I don't specify, don't ask for details. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes on, but if you ask about them while the Quran is being revealed, they will be shown to you. So Allah has pardoned what, what, uh, that which is past. So when uh, um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, Yani is, is, is forgiving and he is forbearing. So we have to follow the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do not ask more questions. Do not ask. Keep things where Allah stopped, where Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu did not go over. Sometimes you find people asking the scholars questions just to make sure that they know what, uh, what they are talking about. They just want to, 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 make, to, make, the, to make them uh, yani just, uh, they, want, they want to make it hard for the, for the scholars. Why? Sometimes people ask the, the scholars questions not for the sake of the answer, not because they are seeking an answer, but just to argue. They don't even need the answer. They want to know, does, does he know the answer? These are scholars. Ibn Abbas anhu says, وَلَكِنْ انْتَظِرُوا Wait. Do not ask questions. So when Allah reveals the Quran, you don't need to ask anything. If you ask, you will find the answer in the Quran. But what does the ayah mean? We have to know about the Quran. So we have to strengthen our bond with the Quran. If you read one page a day, make it two. Try to understand the meanings of the ayahs that you are reading. So it's not just going over the Quran one time after another, one khatam after another. No. Try to understand the meanings of the ayahs. And when you understand them, try to implement what you learned about, about the Quran in your, in your daily life. And this is how Sayyidina Umar عنه, used to be. He used to, to take five ayahs and he would understand them. And then he would implement them and then he would move to the, to the next five ayahs. So when we understand the Quran, we follow what is being ordered in the Quran and we abstain from what is unlawful that both are shown in the Quran. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, yani, uh, make it clear to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to deliver the message فَإِذَا أَمَرْتُكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ فَأْتُوا مِنْهُ مَا اسْتَطَعْتُمْ so when I command you to do anything, just obey as much as you can. 
وإذا نهيتكم عن شيء فدعوه but when I forbid you of Elf to do anything then leave it leave it do not do it if you think a little bit about the first part and the second part it, when I command you to do anything obey as much as you can do as much as you can You might not be able to fulfill it, to do 100%, but do as much as you can. But look at the second part. But when I forbid you to do anything, leave it. So for, for, uh, for, orders, for orders, we have to do as much as we can of that order. But for The things that are being forbidden, we have to leave it all. We cannot do uh, just part of it. No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, no robbing, no stealing. Khalas. It doesn't, uh, there is nothing called a small, small robbing or small stealing. No, no stealing. That's it. So Umar ibn Abd al-Aziz radiallahu anhu says, لَيْسَتِ التَّقْوَى قِيَامُ اللَّيْلِ وَصِيَامُ النَّهَارِ وَلَكِنَّ التَّقْوَى أَدَاءُ مَفْتَرَضَ اللَّهِ وَتَرْكُ مَا حَرَّمَ اللَّهِ So Umar ibn Abd al-Aziz, uh, he, was called, uh, he was called the fifth caliph. So he was after Sayyidina Abu Bakr, Sayyidina Umar, Sayyidina Ali, and Sayyidina Uthman. So he wants the, the, the next one. So he said, لَيْسَتِ التَّقْوَى قِيَامُ اللَّيْلِ وَصِيَامُ النَّهَارِ Taqwa is not just to wake up at night, to perform prayers, and to fast during the day. No, that's not called taqwa. But taqwa is to do To, to obey what Allah has commanded you to do and to leave what Allah has forbidden you to do. This is taqwa. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, At-taqwa ha huna wa ashara ila qalbih. So he, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, At-taqwa being pious is here. And he pointed to his heart. So we have to connect our heart to the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to know exactly what taqwa means. We have to leave dunya. We have to leave the love of dunya. We have to leave the, the things that would cause our heart to be sick. Pride, uh, b b b being stingy, so so many things that if they get into the heart, they would make it uh, a black heart. We want our heart to be white. We want our heart to be pure. We want to have a sound heart. We have to work for our for the life after. We want to be of the winners. So stay away from what was forbidden and get as much as you can from what Allah has ordered. Because the result, the result is gaining the reward in this dunya and the life after. So uh, we, might, we might say, okay, we may, we may find doing a certain commandment Uh, to be quite difficult. So Allah ordered us to do so many things, but sometimes some of them are difficult. But we should always remember that Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, said to Aisha radiallahu anha, your reward is the magnitude of your exertion, of your effort. The more effort you do, the more reward you will get. So the harder we find doing a certain action, the more we know that Allah will reward us. Now, 
uh, when the hadith ends with uh, not questioning, this hadith does not mean that we should not ask questions. No, because when you ask questions, you learn. But it refers to the questions that are of no benefit. These questions are the ones that we have to, to stay away from. And we all know the story of uh, the cow surat, in, in Surah Al-Baqarah, when, uh, when the people were asked to slaughter a cow and they started to ask, what color is it? What, uh, so, so they made it difficult for themselves. Do not ask questions. And always remember that we want deeds, not mere words. So do not waste your time. Do not waste the time of people. Do not waste the time of the scholars. If there isn't a, an important question, do not ask. Of course, if you are a beginner, if you want to learn about, about the religion, you ask. But the hadith means that questions which are of no benefit. These are the questions that people should be uh, uh, away from. So this hadith can also be linked to Hadith number seven, when Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Deenun nasih. So the religion is to give advice. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is giving us advice. This is the mercy of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he is caring about us. He is caring about our akhirah. Not only about this dunya. No. We as parents should be careful and should be where, uh, caring about the uh, life after of our children. We should always give them advices. We should always guide them. We should always know what, uh, uh, we should always follow, their, their, follow them in, and know what they are doing. We should give them, uh, we should give them advice. So, so the other thing is the uh, what perishes people, the questioning and disobeying their, their prophets. So we should never go against anything that the, the Prophet وسلم, told us because this was the reason for the destruction of the previous nations. So this is how the, this hadith also ends, it's just an order from Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, to follow the orders and to abstain from the forbidden things. Then Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, says in the next hadith, Inna Allah tayyibun la yaqbalu illa tayyiba. Allah is good and accepts only that which is good. So this hadith teaches us about the acceptance of deeds. So what deeds are accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The ones that have good intentions, the ones that have sincere intentions, the ones that are pure, the ones that are free from defects. So uh, a thief, will not be accepted from him to go rob someone just to feed the poor. The action should be for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, free of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered us to be away from. So Allah is tayyib, and he accepts the tayyib. Allah is good and he accepts what's good. So this is the first part of the hadith 
it establishes that Allah is Tayyib. And he, the, uh, uh, and for the action to be accepted, it needs to be a Tayyib. So mm, mm, the, the action should not have any riya, should not have any showing off, should, or, uh, nor it should be a bid'ah, an innovation that was not in the uh, actions of Islam. So when Allah accepts an action, this means two things. He is pleased with this action and that he rewards, he will reward us for this action. So we have to be careful what to say, what to do. Will our words hurt someone? Then this is not called tayyib. This is not called, called good. If someone says those words to us, will, will we be uh, happy? If not, then we, we shouldn't say these words to people. Then the hadith goes on. وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ أَمَرَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ بِمَا أَمَرَ بِهِ الْمُرْسَلِينَ and verily, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded the believers to do that which he has commanded the messengers. What did he say? So, فَقَالَ تَعَالَى يَا أَيُّهَا الرُّسُلُ كُلُوا مِنَ الطَّيِّبَاتِ وَعْمَلُوا صَالِحًا This is what, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, what, what he said to the messengers. Oh, you messengers, Eat from the tayyibat, eat from the kinds of the halal, the legal food. And perform righteous deeds. So do everything good. This is what it means. Because Allah is good and he accepts good. And and he told us, O oh, you who believe, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, kulu min tayyibati ma razaqnaakum. Eat of the lawful things that we have provided you. So again, Allah is good and he accepts good. And he wants us to take and to do everything that's good. So in the hadith, we are being compared to the prophets here. Sallallahu alayhi. Peace be upon them all. So how, how are we compared to the prophets? We have been both ordered to do, to eat from that which is tayyib. Both. So we should see this comparison as a privilege to us. We've been compared to the, to the prophets. So the prophets are humans like us. They are not just angels or uh, superhuman, super, super people. No, they are people like us. So Allah gave us the same orders. And this means at the end, we should try to follow their footsteps. We should follow, follow Allah's order and abstain from what he uh, has asked us both to abstain from. Then the hadith goes, goes on. So, ثُمَّ ذَكَرَ الرَّجُلُ يُطِيلُ السَّفَرِ أَشْعَثَ أَغْبَرَ يَمُدُّ يَدَيْهِ إِلَى السَّمَاءِ يَا رَبُّ يَا رَبُّ ومطعمه حرام ومشربه حرام وملبسه حرام وغزي بالحرام فأنا يستجاب لذلك فأنا يستجاب له Then Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned the case of a man This man uh, who is having a uh, journey far so يطيل السفر long journey and أشعث أغبر. He's disheveled. He's dusty. 
is not clean because of uh, traveling from place to place for a long time. And of course, uh, traveling on camel or on a horse. So it's not that clean uh, environment. It's dust all, all around him. And who spreads out. He spreads out his hands to the sky, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Oh Lord, oh Lord. But what is... What, what about this man? His food is haram. His food is unlawful. His drink is haram. His clothing is haram. And he has been nourished with haram. So everything that this person does is haram by haram. So how can his supplication be answered? Subhanallah. So, to, uh, understanding this man, the Prophet described this man raising his hands in dua. He, he described him with specific description. And he talked about traveling, the time of acceptance of dua. You know when they say, when you hear someone who is traveling, you say, make dua for us. When, a tra when someone is traveling, the dua is accepted. So this man is dusty, he's covered with dust. And uh, this is, uh, so, so this is a sign of humility. And it, comparing it to the uh, dua, this is how we should how we should be when we do the, the dua. We should be having hum, humility to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya Allah, we are nothing, we want you. So these are the two things that are uh, important for the dua. So he raised his hands and when, uh, and this is also uh, uh, related to du'a, we raise our hands when we do the du'a, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says uh, in one of the hadiths, the hadith Qudsi, uh, the meaning of of the hadith. I'm not saying the hadith exactly, but when someone wants to make du'a, then raise your hand. Start with Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, sending salawat to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and end with sending salawat to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And in between, make your dua. Then Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, أَقْبَلُ الْأُولَى وَالْآخِرَةِ I accept the beginning and the end, and I will not reject what's inside. But of course, we have, the, the dua should be dua for khair, dua for Goodness, dua for not dua against anyone. No. So when someone uh, starts the dua, this person he would say, "Ya Rabbi, Ya Rabb." So he he is calling Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And the best time to make dua is before praying Fajr. So before the adhan of Fajr, just wake up. 10 minutes, if you need anything from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, talk to him at that time. He's close to us. And he says, Ala min mustaghfirin fa'aghfir Allah. During that time, is there anyone who is, who is making tawbah? And I will accept his tawbah. Is there someone who is making istighfar, who is asking for, for uh, uh, forgiveness? Then I will grant them forgiveness. Is, is there someone who is asking for so and so? And I will give it to him. Just uh, sometime before the Adhan of Fajr. This is the time where the dua is accepted. So talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is close to us. Inni qareebun fa inni qareebun ujibu da'wat al da'i iza da'an. I am close, I am close and I will answer the call of someone who is calling me. So despite all the positive requirements that that man had, making dua, raising the hand, humility, 
so and so, but due to what he did, Allah is not accepting his dua. So everything that he is doing is haram. His food is haram. His drink is haram. His clothing is haram. And he has been nourished with haram. So he's not obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How would, how would he raise his hand? How would he have the, the, uh, the, 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 the power to do that? If you want to ask someone to, to, to do something for you, you want, you want to be good to that person. But this person has done everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prevented him to do. So how would his supplication be answered? So if you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to answer your questions, you have to be good to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are some people who say, oh, we, we make prayers, we, we, uh, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for so many things, but he, he does not answer our calls. He does not answer our prayers. And for those people, I'll say so many points. The first one is that when we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for anything, he would either give it to us in this dunya or he would, he would delay it till, till the life after. And when he delayed to the life after, it, the answer will be, or the reward will be so much, much, much bigger than if it's given to us in, the, in this dunya. Secondly, sometimes we might be asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we might be nagging that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us or grants us a special wish. And when that thing happens, we would say, oh Allah, we wish it did not happen. It did not turn out to be good to us. So when you want to ask something from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then say, say what you want and say, Ya Allah, if there is khair in that thing, then give it to me. If there is no khair in it, if there is evil in it, then don't give it to me and replace it with something that's good to me. Another point, sometimes we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for, for some, for, for, for dua. We, we do lots of dua and it's not answered. But how do you know that it's not answered? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when, when uh, yeah, uh, let's say when a mom makes a prayer for, the, for her children, it happens, Allah protects. So when you make dua, then know that Allah might have accepted your dua in a way other than what you want. So he might have lifted uh, uh, a calamity that might have happened to you. So don't say, Allah is not answering my call. Allah is answering the calls of, of, of his servants, the good calls of his servants. So, uh, with this, I think we have to stop here. And inshallah, uh, next, next week, inshallah, we will, do, we will start with hadith number 11. And until we meet again next week, inshallah, I would leave you by sending your salam and my salam, our sincere salam to our beloved uh, Prophet Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh